Hi everyone, this is Zeke from YYC Athletes and welcome to another episode. Right now, I am privileged and very honored to have a legend in the Philippine basketball scene. He was the NCAA 2005 NCAA Rookie of the Year with the Mapua Cardinals. In 2007, he won the NCAA Most Valuable Player Award and he was also part of the mythical team. He was drafted by the Alaska Aces in the PBA in the 2008 draft as the 15th overall pick uh, in the second round. And then he moved on to San Miguel Beerman uh, after his Alaska State. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so honored to have with me today Coach Kelvin De La Pena. What's up, guys? What's going on? Here? Coach, Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, well, thank you Thanks for, for the time. Me. How are you feeling right now, Coach? It's cold. It's cold outside. <laughs> it's really cold outside. Uh, but, you know, I just, uh, I, you know, I seen, I seen you doing your, your podcast and your interviews. I think you're doing a great, great job, and I think you're doing a great job spreading uh, some good basketball. Uh, goodness to people and especially in the Philippine community so congrats on that well thank you coach I again it's minus 40 outside yeah, I know. but oh. here we are <laughs> here I am with one of the legends coach Kelvin de la Pena coach uh, I also I forgot to mention that you're also a co-founder of the rice basketball club. yeah so we'll talk about that as well yeah, later yeah. So we're just gonna talk about your basketball journey. Yeah. Where you started and where you are now. Yeah. So let's grew up. You know, I was born in the Philippines. So. Um, where in the Philippines, coach? Were you born? I I was born in Makati City. Okay. And then uh, my parents. We grew up in Las Piñas. My dad played pro. My mm -hmm. dad played pro basketball in the Philippines as well. And, you know, in Jaworski times. Okay. Go. Um, What's you know, your dad's name? Ricardo de la Peña. Ricardo de la Peña. I, I, I think Atoiko is like my Nino. And I don't know. Because <laughs> Atoiko went to Mapu as well. Yes, okay. Right, yeah. so um, they were, you know, obviously they're all good friends mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. all those guys. And Freddie Hobalde. And, and then uh, I moved to Canada when I was 10. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's really how it started, man. That's how it started. So yeah. growing up, of course, you said you were... You're a son of a professional basketball in the Philippines. Yeah. Uh, did you enjoy basketball right away, or? Oh yeah, man. I I uh, I played basketball. I started playing basketball maybe at, like at the age of four. I was that kid. I was that kid that was always on the court during mm -hmm. my dad's game halftime. Or. I last um, Steph Curry. Uh, yeah, I was like that, that kid, that little kid, you know, uh, four years old, and then uh, followed my dad around, mm -hmm. followed my brother around, mm -hmm. and uh, but didn't really like. I wasn't, you know, obviously I was still bata pe. I was yeah, so uh, young, uh, uh, uh. so I didn't really understand. I didn't really understand the the how to, you know, how to obviously you know be the best player or uh -huh. the dominant. I don't even know what mm -hmm. that meant. Mm -hmm. I just for me it was like just basketball. Yeah. Until uh, yeah, and then I moved to the Canada. When you got here. How was it? Did you continue playing basketball or? Yeah, I remember. Else? I remember. I clearly, clearly, clearly remember the 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 day I got to the airport mm -hmm. when I was ten years old. I, the day I got to the airport, I didn't have a winter jacket, mm -hmm. and I couldn't I couldn't wait outside Makalabasan Airport. Yeah. Because I wanted to see the weather, because I wanted to go play basketball right away, and then that was the wow. That yeah. So I stepped out of the airport, and I stepped out. It was September 11. Okay. And I clearly remember it, even the date. The September 11, <laughs> and uh, we arrived. I still remember. It. I still remember the time. I have a really good memory. Yeah. Which is weird. I have this weird thing details. <laughs> uh, it was like four o'clock. I stepped outside, and I was like, "Damn, it's cold," and I remember driving to my uncle's because we were staying at my uncle's mm -hmm. yeah uh -uh. so stay at my uncle's there was a there was a school in front of my in front of my uh my uncle's house mm -hmm. cappy smart cappy smart that memory cappy smart was a school <laughs> and then i passed by and i saw basketball courts and i asked my uncle I'm like do you have a basketball because i want to play, uh, play basketball yeah and that's really it, man. Like I, I was always been just a just a basketball nerd, man. It it runs through my veins. At ten, ten. was there someone training you? Um, or was it just your dad? My or? dad, my dad, mainly my dad. But honestly, I was, uh, I was such a gym rat, man. I was such a gym rat. Like mm -hmm. you name it, I, uh, I would, 
you know, first thing in the morning, and then, you know, as soon as I got home, mm-hmm. I I would go to and then and my day depressed. I go back India. India glaro. India on glaro. I would get really grumpy. Yeah. Uh uh-uh. uh. And um, my late, you know, the, the, my partner that just passed mm-hmm. away. You know, she would always uh, when we would we would get into you know obviously like you know little arguments. Mm-hmm. Uh, she would she would encourage me. She's like, you need to start playing basketball because <laughs> the did press Yeah, that's so your I, that's your medicine. That's my medicine. <laughs> that's my medicine. And then uh, I remember going to parks, even like, but minus minus twenty like this. Oh, I used to uh, I used to carry a shovel and I used to. No you know, way. Yeah, man. Uh, basketball runs through my veins. It's yeah. like, and that's uh, from age of four. Who was your favorite basketball player back then? Favorite basketball player growing up, obviously Michael Jordan. Yeah. MJ is MJ. Yeah. Um, but I didn't. I didn't really catch MJ in his like, you know, when yung talagang tomatalun siya and, uh-huh. and then he's hanging in the air. Mm-hmm. I think uh, Kobe is the one that's like, cause Kobe was young. Eh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Kobe when he entered the league, I was around like that time where he was, I was eighteen. Like, I, I was like, who is this young guy, mm-hmm. right? And uh, the way he moved was like the young MJ. Yeah. And that was it. MJ uh, Kobe was the one that was that was for me, man. Yeah. yeah. Well. Yeah. When did you like realize that basketball is really my pa- my my sport and yeah. I want to take this really seriously? Um, when I was ten years old. Y- Yun talaga, when yeah, I was ten years old, because when I was I started playing basketball, so I was about four years old, yeah. five years old, yeah. like you uh-huh. know, just pick a ball, like little kids. Yeah, you're you're a kid, right? Mm-mm. And then, um, uh, just for fun. And then it was until like I got to Canada, and then I was just ten years old, and my parents put me in community basketball. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then uh, <laughs> some parents thought I was I, my my parents faked my birth certificate. They thought you were older. <laughs> they thought I was older. Yeah, yeah. because uh, it's just I played so much. You were advanced. I just you? played so much, man. I just played mm-hmm. so much basketball. I think by the time I ten ten years old, I've logged in. I was I was logged in almost like a fifteen year old. Yeah. And that's how you know I just played. I played, and then when I played against these like these kids. It was just so easy, and then all the parents thought I was like a thirteen-year-old kid, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I was big because my dad was was a p- pretty big yeah. guy. I think at the age of ten, when I looked around and the parents were complaining about my my potential <laughs> fake of birth certificate, and I was like, "Oh, okay, I'm like, I think I'm one of the best players here." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was it. So you went to Bishop McNally in high school. Bishop right? McNally, yeah. Uh, a lot of people don't know, yeah. I guess, uh, how your Bishop McNally career went. Yeah. So why don't you, you know, share something about Bishop McNally, grade nine? Because yeah. that time, grade nine, pa yun eh. Yeah, grade nine. Um, so we won a grade nine year. Mm-hmm. We were undefeated, grade nine, and then grade ten, we won. Mm-hmm. Uh, grade eleven, we were number one in the city. Mm-hmm. But um, there was a rule, and it's the rule still applies today. Now, if you're playing high school, hindi ka pwede maglaro ng ng ibang liga. Yeah, yeah. Which like rec leagues? Which stuff. I didn't know, like, cause you know, when you're at that time for me, maglaro ko na Filipino league. I was I was playing Filipino league at the age of 15. Yeah. So I've been playing Filipino league since I was like you know 14, mm-hmm. 13 years old. I was playing with like older men. Yeah. And um, when I was in grade 11, I didn't know the rule. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it still stands. It still stands today, yeah, which is stands. I think is a dumb rule. Yeah, I think it's the stupidest rule <laughs> because other sports can do it. You know, hockey players can do it. They can mm. play hockey and then play a different sport. Soccer mm. players can do it. Yeah, it, I don't it, understand why it, volleyball players can play volleyball club and then play different sports. So I don't understand why basketball is this thing. And then the reason why. So they obviously naglaro ko ng, ng, ng every Sunday Filipino league. Yeah. And they caught me. The coach of Centro Memorial mm-hmm. waited till first day of playoffs to tell the Calgary education and they basically forfeited all our win games. And we have we didn't lose the game, grade eleven. Wow. So they forfeited our games. They waited for for uh, for playoffs. Kasi kalaban namin sila. sila. So, someone snitched. Someone snitched, man. <laughs> and then uh, my grade twelve year didn't didn't 
didn't really end the way I wanted to. Yeah. We lost in the first round of playoffs. Oh. So that was heartbreaking. Yeah. That was heartbreaking. Yeah. So, you know, you're in grade 9, grade 10, you won. And mm-hmm. then thinking that, well, the dominate kind of grade 11, 12. Yeah. 11 was there. And then it just cut short. Still, I guess you made, you know, that impression mm-hmm. dito sa, sa leagues mm-hmm. dito. After that playing career in the Bishop McNally, mm-hmm. you ended up playing in the Philippines or no, I was played, there? I played Mount Royal. I Mount played Royal. Mount Royal uh, one year, mm-hmm. one year and a half, a yeah. year and a half. I played Mount Royal a year and a half. How was that? Uh, it was okay. It was okay. You know, it's basketball, basketball in, in Philippines and Canada is very different. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. very different. Mm-hmm. In what way or in what sense? I think, I think you know, when I was playing here, uh, and, and I'm not afraid to say this, and I'm probably going to ruffle some feathers, mm-hmm. uh, basketball in Canada is very soft. Okay. Yeah. And we all know that. We mm-hmm. all know that yeah. Philippines is more, more aggressive. Yeah. More right? physical. More physical. More in your face. More in your face, right? So when I played Mount Royal, uh, I didn't really have a lot of friends. I didn't really have a lot of friends because mm-hmm. all I did was play basketball. Yeah. I didn't really go to class. <laughs> I didn't really go to class in Mount Royal. So all I did was play basketball yeah. in Mount Royal. And a lot of people misunderstood me because I was like, this is what I want to do. I want to play pro one day. Yeah. And you mentioned earlier, Kobe was your MJ. MJ Kobe, Kobe were your favorite players. So, absolutely. And so, they had that mentality. And, right? man, and, and you're absolutely right. Like growing up, I remember reading, I remember reading like the Michael Jordan books. I remember reading a book about Kobe. So for me, it was like, I want to be with these guys. Mm-hmm. I want to have the same mindset, yeah. the Mamba mentality, yeah. The, yeah. the work ethic that mm-hmm. MJ talks about in his book. Yeah. And uh, ultimately, I wanted to play pro. Yeah. Because that's mm-hmm. really, that's mm-hmm. really the goal go to play to play. Ever since 10 years old. Ever since 10 years old. Yeah. But, you know, when, when I was playing in Mount Royal, I was I was hanging out with guys, and, and not, not to knock them out, not mm. to talk bad about my former teammates. Yeah. I was playing against guys that, you know, that, that did it because they were good in high school, mm-hmm. but they're not really going anywhere. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, to put it in the context, you, you were playing in Calgary, which is a hockey town. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Absolutely. So my teammates, you know, we my teammates go, you know, they, uh, they practice... Monday to Friday, we practice two hours, mm-hmm. and then on Friday, Saturday, they go out and they go, you know, shampre, gimmick, yeah, not, you know, go out clubbing, drink, yeah, yeah, and then Monday, Friday again, that's what they would do. Yeah. For me, it was like I would show up six a.m. at the gym, mm-hmm. we'll go work out the hall, and then before practice. Our practice would, I remember practice started at four o'clock. I would be at the gym to go to my two o'clock na till six. That was me. Like, I was like, I want to play pro because yeah. obviously I'm Filipino. Yeah. I have a yeah. chance. Yeah. But I don't, you know, I, I'm not mad at my former teammates. It's just, wala sila. Wala yeah. sila pro aspirations. Mm. Eh. You were just complete. Your mindset was just completely different. Yeah, my mindset, my mind was different, different from, from them. My mind was different. My mind was like, I was on a mission. Mm-hmm. I was on a mission to, you know, to, to play at a higher level. So at that time, were you really thinking about the PBA already? I didn't, you know what? Hindi mashado. Like, I remember going to my friend's house and my friend's uncle sent some PBA tapes to him because he wanted to play basketball. Mm-hmm. And uh, he said, go to the basement, let's go watch. And mm-hmm. I, and I watched PBA. I, me- I remember um, John Arrigo, uh, Jeff Carriasso, Alaska, Alaska, Alaska. Alaska. Number thirty-one, Johnny. Yeah, Arrigo. John Arrigo, Johnny. Um, you know, obviously, like when I moved to the Philippines, we're friends now. Yeah, and we yeah. became friends. Jeff, Willie Miller, mm-hmm. all the guys. You know, I remember uh, Jimmy Alapa, mm-hmm. Mike Cortez, and all these guys. And I remember watching their games. And I'm like, man, I can. I think I can compete. I can compete with mm-hmm. these guys. Yeah. You know, with my with my mindset and with with the will. Mm. I think I can compete with these guys and uh, that really started kind of just sparked my interest and I was like tell you know I called my dad yeah. and I said hey can you tell can you call Uncle Tito Boy 
<laughs> can you call Tito Boy to record some games and send yeah. it over? Yeah. And mm-hmm. that was it, man. That was I just kept watching games and I just kept studying Philippine basketball and, and the PBA. So after your first year uh, with MRU, yeah. uh, what happened? Why did you not continue? Um, I just, again, I just, uh, I just felt like it wasn't serious enough. I see. So what did you do next? Um, I said, pardon my French, but I said, screw this. This, yeah. this is shitty basketball. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go somewhere where I want to get paid. Yeah. Uh-huh. I want to I wanna play basketball and I want to become a professional and mm-hmm. I want to do this for a living. I want to mm-hmm. do this for a career. So I didn't, I didn't continue. I just up and left and I didn't tell anybody. I just probably told like my close, close friends, maybe, <laughs> maybe two or three. <laughs> and um, yeah, I just left. And just, was that the time you decided to go to the Philippines? Yeah, May, May 5th. May 5th. May 5th. No, May 5th. It was the day. It was the day that I decided with well, my family. Mm-hmm. You know, my dad tricked me because my dad would always talk about Philippines. He would always, you know, like he was planting the seed there. Yeah. He was planting the seed. And then um, he said, oh, we're going to the Philippines in May mm-hmm. just for a visit. Yeah. I was like, okay. And when we went to a visit, he took me to all the schools, all the professional practices. Yeah. He took me to practices. And and then, then, coach. Yeah, just to play, just yeah. to play, just like, you know, just, I think my dad wanted to see me playing against that, yeah, that playing caliber. Against that caliber. Yeah. And I actually did really well. Okay. A pro team approached me at that time. It was an NBA team. I don't remember which NBA mm-hmm. it was. Mm-hmm. I can't even. It's, it's like the regional league yeah, back then in the Philippines. Back then. Metropolitan basketball. Metropolitan, yeah. that's yeah. right. Yeah. So NBA team asked me to play with them and my dad's like he's only 19 <laughs> so again they thought you were older they just thought like I was when, older right just so, like when you were in high school that's right <laughs> and uh, so I went to the Philippines I had a chance to go to Ateneo mm-hmm. I had a chance to go to La Salle mm-hmm. um, but the issue there was you have to sit out for two years oh residency residency yeah. for two yeah. years because yeah. you're yeah. here mm-hmm. so when you're when you're um, when you're a high school graduate here, or you're from, or oh, no, no, sorry, sorry, because I graduated ng one year dito sa college. Yeah, I have to sit out ah, I two see. years. Yeah, yeah. Mm-mm. And I said, I'm like, I'm not gonna sit out two years. So it was a no-brainer for me to play for my dad's yeah. alma mater because my dad also played for Mapua. Oh, okay, okay. So, I didn't know that. Yeah, my dad also played for Mapua. That's why I took go Freddie Hobadi and all ah, those guys. I see, I see. So, um, just so for the people who are watching, they're not familiar, Ateneo de la Salle, they're two of the, what, two of the biggest UAAP schools. At that time. At that time, right? Well, they're still Still, are. still now. Still are. At that time, mm-hmm. though, they, at that time, it was Ateneo and la Salle would always mm-hmm. play in the finals. That, that's the rivalry. That's the rivalry. Even yeah. until now. I mean, Even I guess now there's a new rivalry, Ateneo UP, but yeah. we're not going to talk about not, that. Not yet. Not, <laughs> not yet. yet. Uh, and then Mapua mm-hmm. is an NCAA yeah. uh, team of yeah. school, right? That's right. Right. Yeah, yeah. So I had a Letran was I I uh, Letran was interested, but the day I was supposed to go to Letran mm-hmm. to go for uh, practice, mm-hmm. they had an exhibition game versus San Sebastian. Okay. So and then San Beda was away. They were doing. They're always they're always they're traveling. So, yeah, yeah. They they train abroad. They train abroad. Yeah. So yeah. my dad said, you know what? Let's go to Mapua. Mm-hmm. And the first day I tried out, the first day I practiced with Mapua, they offered me N one shoes. You N one that then N one. The shoes. biggest like, at that time. At that time, street ball. Street ball like shoes. all the all the players want to yeah. have. Yeah. The N one. Okay. So they gave me N one shoes, and I was like, okay, this is how you're gonna shoot people. This is pretty good. You know? Yeah. So, Mm-hmm. And uh, everybody was just welcoming, you mm-hmm. know. Everybody, even to this day, you my former players go from Mapua. They're like my brothers, man. And I, I, if I were to go back, I wouldn't change a thing. Yeah, I wouldn't change a thing. Those guys are my brothers to till till I go till the wheels fall off. Brotherhood, brotherhood. That, that's what basketball. Does, that's right? it, man. Brotherhood. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so let's talk about your Mapua career. Mm-hmm. Uh, in my intro, I said in two thousand five, you won the rookie of yeah. the year. Yeah. Like coming from just knowing your background now, you mm-hmm. you played here in Canada in Calgary in mm-hmm. your high schools like for the Bishop Agnale, and then you moved 
to MRU when you graduated from high school. You only played one year there. And for you, basketball here was soft, right? And then yeah. you moved to the Philippines, you still dominated. <laughs> yeah, I think you're yeah. like, sorry, coach. Yeah, yeah. It's Philippines. It's known the basketball style there. It's yeah. known to be physical, as you said. It's, yeah. you know, it's not soft yeah. at all. Yeah. Like even now. Yeah. Like we have players coming or from here who go to the Philippines, yeah. and unfortunately they don't do well. Yeah, they just don't understand the game, right? I think I've, I think for me I've been fortunate enough to have a father, na naglaro sa Pilipinas. Yeah, I see. Right. So because that's fortunate. that's the difference for you. That's I think I think you know he's helped me a lot because of growing up, eh? Mm-hmm. Growing up, you know, I would play games and he would always he would always just tell me that like mm-hmm. you can't be soft, like you got to play hard. You can't be soft. And and watching my dad play, and I was like, damn, he's like, what he's telling me, he's doing on the court mm-hmm. when he can still play. I, you know, you know, obviously when he was still able to play, yeah. And um, you know, he would uh, he wouldn't just talk about it; he would actually like, do it, do it. And uh, you know, I, I I looked up to my dad. My dad's my my best friend, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, I would look at him and say, I'm like, oh shit, I'm like, this is how it's gonna be in the Philippines. So I think, you know, and, and, and the work ethic and yeah. the mindset and like just, just being mentally prepared. I think that was the biggest thing for me and mentally prepared. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, <clears throat> the physical part, the physical part and the bumping, that's what I live for. Yeah. Man. And that's why, that's why, you know, when I had a, when I played for Mount Royal, I didn't really enjoy it. Cause it was like the refs, like, you know, you mga, you can't touch, you can't, you can't, you can't yeah. enjoy it. Right. Yeah. Like I enjoy you. Yeah. in your face basketball and the talking smack yeah that's who i am the aggressor mm-hmm. that i play better again when I'm looking aggressive. at your you know the players that you were watching right. growing up they were all those guys yeah they and, were and tough guys absolutely and and i i from mount royal i couldn't really play that i was so misunderstood not many people like me because you know as, as we said the canada is the canada but when you act like that, it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You're Sorry. Too, too aggressive. You're too <laughs> yeah. aggressive. Yeah. Right? And when I moved to the Philippines, you, you, the way I played here, it wasn't accepted. Mm. But when I went to the Philippines, it was the I norm. was looked around. I was like, I'm allowed to do this stuff? It's the norm. <laughs> it is the, the norm, norm, right? I'm like, yeah. I'm allowed to do this stuff? <laughs> and that was it, man. That was, I was, boom. So you went to the Philippines and you knew what to expect. I knew what to expect, yeah. man. My first day, you know what, dude? My first, my my first, my f- very first tryout was UE. Okay. UE. I'll tell you a story. University of the East. Okay. I'll tell you a story. Sure. I'll tell you a story. Right. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if kids kids watching this. I don't know if this is a good example. <laughs> uh, just to tell you guys, just give you guys an idea yeah. of what what type of basketball it was back then. This was like early two thousands. You mm-hmm. know. We talk about Philippine basketball early, early 80s and 90s, how rough it was. It was still rough the early 2000s. Mm-hmm. So I remember my very first tryout and, you know, I was wearing baggy pants, that mm-hmm. baggy pants, and it was yeah. N1. Yeah. I was like, Kobe was my idol. I was wearing my Nike Hirachis <laughs> and uh, I was bald head mm-hmm. like Kobe. Mm-hmm. And you know I was English, you know English speaking, right? Medjo, not Medjo. I was really cocky. It was like Kobe. I was like, I'm ready for it. In me. Filipino, it's the angas, the angas it's, right? It's the angas. angas, right? So I go into UE. Um, I forget his name. Jurel, Jurel something. Ah, I forgot his name. Jurel something. I forgot his last name. There was a drill. It was a rebound drill. So you tatapon ng coach yung bola sa rim, and then you have to box out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right, and it's so competitive, so competitive. So we kept doing that. We kept doing that. I rebound the ball three times in a row. So I hope yeah. it's like the coach says, "All right, first person to get, I believe it was like three or f- three or four or five rebounds, that team wins." Mm-hmm. Yeah, offensive rebound. So that one on coach. For me, I was like, I don't care. I'm trying yeah. out. I want to make the team. Yeah, yeah. So I got three offensive rebounds right like that on the spot. Right. So we won. So the other team, you know, they ran back, they mm-hmm. ran suicides. So the drill went again. Mm-hmm. So I said, yeah. we won. Yeah. So the ra- uh, the coach uh, said, okay, the same thing, boom, 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 boom. And then three rebounds. Three rebounds. Jarrell yeah. came in, 
when the coach threw the ball, I'm looking for the body. And I got him up on the katawan. Yeah. I was looking for a body. Yeah. But what Jarrell did is he took a step back. He took like five steps back. When the shot went up, he said, boom, punch me in the back of the head. And I fell and I was like, boom, punch me in the back of the head. And when I got up, I was ready to fight. I was yeah. ready to, I'm like, oh. yo, what the, he's ready to fight. And when I got up and I was ready to fight, all of them were laughing at me. So for me, wow. I was, all of them were laughing at me and I was like, whoa. And I was like, I yeah, was like, it was like shit. you get punched. You, I'm like, oh damn. I'm natural like, reaction, you right, punch you, back. You punch back, right? Yeah. So for me, it was like, I was so mad. But then after seeing them laugh, mm -hmm. I was like, oh shit, I'm in a whole different, different world out here. <laughs> you started enjoying this is, it. <laughs> this is, this is, this is, this is, this is, this is it. Yeah. So after, I didn't finish the practice because I was so mad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I got up, I got my bag, right? And Dindo Pomarin was the coach. Coach Dindo. Coach Dindo yeah. was Pomarin. Yeah. And he yelled at Jarrell, Jarrell, swearing at him, what are you doing? And then I got up, I got my bags and I left the gym. My dad's like, when we got in the car, my dad looked at me, he's like. Oh, he was there. Oh, he was there, my whole yeah. family was yeah. there. My brother, yeah. my brother, my mom, my dad, we were watching. Cause Dindo and my dad are friends. Yeah. So I, I got up and I and Dindo came up and he's like, Rick, sorry, you know, gonna go no. My dad's like, no, it's fine. So that's Philippine basketball. He needs to learn, right? That's what my dad said. And for me, I was like, man, you're supposed to be back me, me. Yeah. So we got in the car. my dad here. So I got in the car and I'm pissed. I'm yeah. like talking bad. I'm talking. I'm talking. I'm like, that's not right. Blah blah. blah. This is not basketball. Yeah. My dad. My dad looked at me. He said, if you want to play out here. People here are not going to adjust to you. Mm -hmm. You have to adjust to them. And that was like, boom. So you mean to tell me I'm allowed to do this? <laughs> well, in one way, it was your welcome. It was my welcome. Philippine basketball. But in, moment. in one way, it was for me, it was like, okay, this, this is it. Like, this is, this like, is what you were looking this, for. This is what I was looking for. <laughs> that type of competition. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, my, my, my type of mindset is like, if we're ready to go to, up to the, to like to death, uh, let's mm. go. Yeah. So fast forward five years. Yeah. So fast forward five years. So we play UE. Okay. So uh, Phil Oil. Phil Oil. Okay. Preseason. Preseason. Pre Phil, Phil Oil. Yeah. yeah. So that time, I was trying out pa. Okay. Try out pa ako sa UE. Eh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was, yeah. Pa ako sa oh yes, yeah, yeah. So I haven't actually officially signed with Mapua. So they had no idea who I was. Mm -hmm. They didn't know who Calvin Del Peña was. Yeah. Rookie of the year. Yeah. Fast forward five, four or five years. I've already won my awards. Mm -hmm. I've already, you know, uh, PBL. I've proven myself mm -hmm. and MVP yeah. and stuff. So, kilala na ako sa Yeah, Pilipina. you had the name, Calvin Del Peña. Yeah. Right? So, um, and then you go against UE? I go against UE, man. Okay. Was the guy still there? The guy's still there. <laughs> okay. The I want to hear this. Yeah. What happened that, that game? That guy is still there. So, <laughs> his teammates, Marcy Arellano, okay, I know Ernst Aguindel, yeah, yeah. all the UE guys were my good friends okay. because in most of those guys... Playing the PBL. PBL. My yeah. good friends. Yeah. And I'm a Bisaya. I'm Bisaya. Mm -mm. So, then we became all friends. Ern and I were me and Ern. Mm -hmm. So this guy steals the ball in half court. He stole the ball in half court, man. Okay. Sorry, I just. Yeah, I know. I, it's, I just, I, it's, 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 replaying, up it's, it's replaying in my head. <laughs> so he steals the ball in half court, and I run back. I run back, and I was gonna go for a charge. I run back, gets the ball. Mm -hmm. to the, to the, to the I stood in front of him. I stood in front of him, mm -hmm. and. I was gonna go for a charge. Yeah, like this. I was gonna go for a charge, yeah. and then something in my instinct told me this is the guy that gave you the first hit. Welcome to the you, Philippines. Welcome to the Philippines. So when he went, yo, e, yeah. when he went up for a shot layup, I punched him right in the jaw. Boom! Oh, I punched him right in the jaw. Boom! And he fell backwards. Mm. And when he fell backwards, nobody in the gym, everyone Did was anything? like. No, nobody was like, why did you do that? Yeah. But for me, it was like, I kept tabs. You were counting. I was counting tabs, <laughs> right? So when I hit him, when I hit him, he fell on the floor and I looked at him, I'm like, do you remember that time yeah. that you first yeah. gave me? 
Five Nothing. years ago. Five years ago. Yeah. Kept quiet. I looked at the bench and all his teammates were laughing. Because <laughs> they were Because they were there. Yeah. They, they, they were saw there. It. They saw everything. Nung sinuto ko ko yeah. on the first day. Mm-hmm. Rob La- Labagala. La- 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 yeah. Ernst Segendel. Marcy Arellano. Uh, Paul Lee. Paul Lee was still Paul was Lee. there. Um, so they were all laughing on the bench. And then yeah. Jarrell was just on the floor like going like this. But Did he fight back? No, no, because I already have. I was already at that time. I was already. You were Kelvin. I was Kelvin. No one was. No one was gonna you touch can, me. Yeah, yeah. No one was gonna touch me. What happened to you? Were you did you get ejected? No, no. They were so surprised. They you were. Did you get ejected? So, this was early two thousand. You're allowed to do this. <laughs> you were allowed to do this. You were allowed. Oh. To, I wish they had. I wish they had the record yeah. recording. I looked at my my Papua bench. My coach was Leo uh, Esa, Esa yeah. and Monch Gavieres. And looked at him. Monch looked at me. He's like, he's like, that was personal. And <laughs> yeah, I, and it was. I, that was personal. I'm like, it is personal. <laughs> so after the game, I explained to Coach Monch, and he's like, good, good. Like it's good that like you know. Well, because at that time, again for the kids, yeah, this is just an example yeah. of what I went through. Mm-hmm. This was my. That's why you can say <laughs> basketball here is soft. This was my. Because that what happened there was not <laughs> soft at all. This was my time. Yeah. This is my time. This was uh, like mm-hmm. early, like this was like two thousand five, two thousand. Yeah. So mo- most of you kids weren't even born yeah. yet. And this was in the Philippines. This is in the Philippines, yeah. right? So, <laughs> yeah. I mean that that gave so much context. And for me, you know, my, my confidence, right? Like that boosted my confidence mm-hmm. that like when I did that, it was like a validation that like I'm here to stay. Mm-hmm. I'm yeah. here to stay. Like I'm here to stay. And like whatever you guys do, mm-hmm. they ain't going to they ain't going to face me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, thank you for sharing. Yeah, that, that was sorry. I mean, that was a long story. Oh, no, it's great. <laughs> I want to hear more, but you know, we have to yeah, 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 move yeah, yeah. on to our, yeah. to our next uh, topic here. Yeah. So, you won MTA Rookie of the Year. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then that was 2005, 2007. You yeah. won the MVP, and everyone expected that you will be, mm-hmm. you know, at maybe top five yeah. draft pick in, yeah. in the PBA. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, 2000, 2007, when I won the MVP, all the PBA teams wanted me to go to the draft. Mm hmm. But I didn't want to. I didn't want to go to the draft because for me, I'm a very loyal person. Okay. So when Mapua took me in as a, their own, like their mm-hmm. own, I wanted to give back to Mapua. Yeah. I wanted to give my final. Year. So 2007, when I won the award, my agent called me up. I remember my agent calls me up. He's like, so the draft is coming up in a week. In a week? In a week. Okay. Because I, I was... I was at the top board yeah, of, yeah. of the race. Some echo, some some echo, echo, some echo was at the, some better, yeah. but he was a top board. Mm-hmm. But he got ejected. When you get ejected, you oh, gotta okay. play him yeah. One well. technical foul, even. That's can, right. Yeah. So me and him were like on the in the race. Yeah. Okay, coach. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's okay. One quick question. Yeah. Was there a UAAP team mm. that tried to? Yeah. You know, get you while you were in in in, in Makua. FU Lasalle and Ateneo. Okay. F U the Sal Ateneo. Yeah. So oh, there's a there's the, a I'm they won't, wanted to I won't say their school name. I won't say the school name. But a school name. Um Bul- offered Bulong me, was akin na may ako. <laughs> <laughs> I wanna know that. Just kidding. A school name offered me a uh, you know, they offered me a truck. Okay. They offered me uh, a vehicle, they offered me a place, uh, an apartment. And then the other school offered me Nike deals. Same thing. Were uh, those allowed at that time? No. 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 Okay. That's, that's why, why you can. can't. That's why. No, I, can't I just wanna you know give context <laughs> to everyone. They, it still happens understand. today, man. I know. Yeah. It yeah. happens today, man. It's. I, I'm sure it happens more today. Oh, definitely. I'm sure it happens. It does. It <laughs> yeah. really does. Especially now that there are offers from you yeah. know. Yeah. Then other just, countries. Absolutely. Um, so so at that time. Um, you know, I was getting offers, all three, all, most of them. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't want to say the, the names of the school, mm-hmm. it's, you know, the yeah. schools and oh, social yeah, media. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, but yeah, there's the Nike and then the apartments, but you know, I, I'm a very loyal person. So for me, it was like, why, why would I change it? Like, yeah. 
I'm already here in Mapua. They, 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 they took you in. They took me in. They took you in. They took me in. And then my brothers, I was so close. I was so close with my Mapua guys. It doesn't, it didn't make sense now to go to a school. I want my my best friends go and mm-hmm. start anew. Right? Yeah. It just didn't make sense for one year. Yeah, for just for one year. Just for and one year. One and done. Yeah. I mean, it, it would have been cool if you went to FU. I'm an FU. Yeah, you're FU. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so when they, when they won a championship, I watched their championship game. Uh, the Arwin, Arwin, Arwin Championship? Arwin Championship. Yeah. Remember that championship? The yeah, against the Sun? I was in that locker room. I was in that locker room. So you were that close, I guess. I was that. I was that close. <laughs> was I was uh, was that close in that locker room? So Denok was there. RJ was there. Jeff Chan was there. Mm-hmm. And uh, when I walked in the locker room, they were like, you know, obviously because like they know who I am from yeah. NCAA. Like, what are you doing here? Yeah. So when I walked in there, so they thought I was official, right? Yeah. It was official. Yeah. And uh, so they're they're. Their main scout was my dad's close friend, uh, Monch Gavieres. Okay. Uh, Monch Gavieres' dad, and uh, Monch Gavieres' sister was their sideline reporter, mm-hmm. which was married, which is married to, to Arvin. Arvin yeah, now. Yeah. Oh, it would have been funny. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I started at the FEU at 2008. Ah, oh, there you go. First year. There you go. That was just around that time. Yeah, yeah. It was around that time. So I had no idea though. I was actually yeah. leaning towards FEU. I was actually leaning towards FEU. But then the loyalty in you, yeah, the loyal guy in you said, Coach Mon- Coach Monch. So I had um, Horacio Lim for two years, mm-hmm. and then the third year, MVP call. Mm-hmm. Coach Monch said, Hey K. There's an opportunity for you to go to FEU. I see your captain, yes, Adlan reporter, and his dad was the main, one of the main scouts mm-hmm. for FEU. Yeah. So my dad calls me up. He says, "Hey, here's the situation. FEU wants you to go." And then Coach Monch, one day in practice, mm-hmm. he says, "Why don't you just come to the the championship game and invite guy?" Yeah. Yeah. So I went to the championship game, and then the whole thing happened. Arwin thing happen and then they but it was crazy did people see you they saw me and they put like, me on tv man <laughs> they put me on tv so i was sitting there behind the feu bench and they put me on tv and i was like damn kelvin de la pena they probably put the name kelvin de la pena mapua cardinals and then people realize what is he doing yeah, on that bench and, and that sparked that the amount of text messages <laughs> i got so my my agent called me up mm-hmm. my agent texted me and then uh, a couple schools the mm. schools were scouting me <laughs> they just kept going kept going right and then um and at the end of the day it was like I knew I was gonna stay with my pool. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I knew I wasn't gonna like. That's where you built your name. Yeah, that's where I built my name, right? It was it was fun. It was fun with them like going back and forth, but no, it was I was gonna stay with my pool, man. Yeah. yeah. So. So you stayed there. You yeah. After your MVP season, your last year. Yeah. And, and then, you were also playing in the PBL while you were PBL, playing. PBL. Yeah, PBL. I was the second pick. The second pick in the PBL. The first pick was Rob Reyes. Rob Reyes, okay. He ended big up guy. with big yeah, guy. Center, right? Yeah, he's in Florida now. He mm-hmm. went went home. Uh, Rob Reyes, he got picked to go to Harbor Center. Mm-hmm. And you got picked by? I got picked by, who picked me? Was it Happy or no? No, 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 no. Um, who picked me? Oh gosh, I don't even remember. Man. I'll look it up, I'll look it up. I don't even remember. <laughs> Granny Goose? I don't remember. <laughs> Something like that. That's, yeah, it that's was okay. so long ago. It was yeah, almost 20 years ago. <laughs> Um, but yeah, they picked me and then, um, yeah, so the reason why I think the reason why in, uh, no, 2008, 2008, I I ended up second round Mm -hmm. because my 2008, I already suffered. Uh, I already had three herniated disc. You were playing with three herniated disc. Yeah. So what are you playing? Man, dude. So my MVP year, 2007. And then 2008, so man, I was playing, I was playing RP team before Gilas ever existed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There was a RP team. Yeah, I would watch those games. Yeah, it was uh, me. Was and, it, who's the point guard? Uh, me and LA. Yeah. LA Tenorio. Mm-hmm. Me and LA Tenorio. Um, who else was there? 
Was Marcy there? Um, Ray Guevara. Okay, Ray Guevara. Let's Ray run. Guevara. Let's run. Yeah, yeah. Um, Brian Faundo. Mm-hmm. Center. Yeah, so, you know, we were playing RP team. And, dude, I played RP to Mapua to PBL. So, for three, four years, I did Straight. not get an off season. Uh, my playing weight was one 165 pounds. Okay. I was that light. You, yeah. I was that light, man. But I was just playing back to back. My final year with Mapua, I think, I don't know, in the over, overused. Overused. Okay. So the last. When did you know that you had a herniated? Test? I had no idea. So my, the tail end ng season ng Mapua, I believe like the last three, four games ng Mapua, I would get back spasm. Okay. Right. I've now, never experienced back back spasm. Oh, it's before. the worst thing, man. It's the worst thing. It's the worst thing. That, like back spasm is like you can't move, right? Like mm-hmm. you're like you literally like because it's your main. It's like your core. Hindi ako magalaw, so I took. I didn't. I didn't practice for like a week and a half. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a drug called acroxia. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that it's was like that's pain that's reliever. Pain reliever. Yeah. That's illegal in North America. Is it? It's illegal in North America. So when I moved back, I was looking for a crocsha. And then I remember the pharmacist looked at me funny. He's like, that's not allowed here because it's a really strong painkiller. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's illegal here. But in Asia, yeah, you, yeah, can, no. you can take like, all that. I have a, a friend who works in the medical field. He would take that almost every day. That's you pop it in, man. Yeah, yeah. So, man, I remember drinking Red Bull before the game with my crocsha. So you can play. So and I can play. Cause it back spasms in my way. So my mm-hmm. right leg, my right leg. I remember going like this. I was like, oh man, I keep cramping up. But yung pala yung sciatic sciatic nerve ko mm-hmm. na pe pinch na. You had no idea. I had no idea. So it was kept shooting pain. It kept shooting pain, and then I couldn't move my big toe anymore. Cause my big the sciatic nerve is connected to this. Mm-hmm. Big toe. Mm-hmm. So every time I would try to move it, I was like, oh, "Come on, dude. like the numb." I was like, "It's getting." And this is before cold. games. Like, this is going on for like almost like siguro mga two months before uh, 2008 NCAA season. So after like your the, MVP year, after a year, F- MVP year, yeah, 2008. Nafifil ko na. Yeah, because you kept playing. Like I kept playing three, th- three, four PBL years. PBL games, PBL games, uh, PBL games. I was averaging, averaging siguro 35 minutes, mm-hmm. and then go to Mapua. I was averaging close to 40 minutes. I wasn't coming off, man. Mm-hmm. So like you were so busy. Yeah. So bram busy na play, play, still play, had play. that mindset. That's you it, man. Had, it's it's. No, yeah, it's you're just sore. Mindset. You're just sore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're yeah. just sore. Yeah. 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 You just go to sleep, wake up, you get some rest, you yeah. ice up, you go. Back then, it was nobody really, nobody really did the, the whole science thing. No, right? no science. No one, no back yeah, then, yeah, right? Yeah. This is early two thousand, yeah. right? So, um, the back spasm, the back spasm, mm-hmm. and then the word in the street in the PBA, he's it was. My injury ako. Okay. Because I didn't play some of the games at NCAA, mm-hmm. right? And that they would limit me in minutes because I lower back spasm. Mm-hmm. Cool. Was there an official uh, doctor that or no. statement from a doctor no, saying no? It's no, just back spasm. Kelvin, this is back spasm. You play too much. Rest. Okay, so it's just rest. That's rest. There was no. Did you rest? Um, maybe you should go to two weeks. Two weeks. Okay. Two weeks. So there was no diagnosed like oh back spasm nothing. So finally. Someone took a chance. Alaska took a chance and said, "You know what? We'll take a chance." Mm-hmm. Right? But you were projected to go. I was projected to go top ten. Top ten. Okay. Because you were the MVP, Rookie of the yeah. Year. The name Calvin De La Pena was yeah. known all over the Philippines. Yeah. Projected to top ten. Top ten. Yeah. And uh, my agent, my agent at that time, he's like, "Hey, here's the situation. The word in the street is you're, you're injured. Yeah. Your knee. They said your knee is injured. I was like, my knee." I'm like what? My knee. He's like, well, that's the word in the street. You're always like, because they they took two weeks off right, to rest. My knee, yeah. and that was a tough. Yung 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 class na yon. Mm-hmm. Who the, was there? Oh my gosh, Gabe Norwood, Sol Mercado. Tough. Oh my gosh, man. Yeah. So that Maybe was one of the best draft classes. <laughs> Ever. You name it, man. Yeah. That's uh, why I was like, man, if I went the year before. <laughs> but <laughs> that was a tough draft class, right? Yeah. Game Norwood. Who else was there? Oh, my gosh. 
man, there's so many big names at that mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. Alaska took me in. And then one day in practice, I did a spin move. And then, boop, I felt my liquid go na like shoot ng sharp pain. Okay. And that was it, man. And then I fell on the floor. And then that was just practice? Practice. Yeah. So Were you playing regular yeah, season scrimmage. games already? No. Yeah, regular season games. Regular yeah. season games already. I say the transition, when you pick up the NCAA, mm-hmm. you, uh, you, go, you get picked and then you can go to practice eh, okay. for Alaska. You know, you know. When you're a senior, you can, when you're a senior in Mapua, you can go to draft, you can go in and out. Mm-hmm. They would understand, okay, you can go to finish yeah. your NCAA yeah. season. And then you, can, you go, can go practice. You can go and, and step in mm-hmm. and watch practice. Yeah, yeah. But for me, I was like, I'm ready to I'm practice. Gonna play. I'm, gonna pr- I'm ready to practice. I'm ready to practice. I'm ready to practice, right? <laughs> and I wanted to show them, I'm like, hey, you made a right decision. Yeah. And they made a mistake. If, they made a mistake. If so, if you know. Number eight. Yeah. Number 15, no, sorry. Yeah. So, and uh, in middle of practice, I, I believe it was a year, it was like a couple, close to a year in. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I. Uh, it was a, a pinch post. Pain. Yeah, it was a pinch post. So, pinasa ko kay Sunny on the mm-hmm. elbow. Mm-hmm. Sunny tossed, handed yeah. it off, and the pag ikot ko, and that was it, man. What happened after that? Uh, I just, yeah, I fell on the floor and I couldn't move my legs, and I couldn't, like, I was like, what is happening? Every time I moved my neck, I felt just this sharp pain. Like, I'm like, what the f? What's happening? And then they took me to the emergency room, and then mm-hmm. the MRI right away. Mm-hmm. And then the doctor came out and he sat me down and he said, I still remember this, because uh, Ali was with me, we were, she was holding my hand and I was mm-hmm. like, I don't know what's happening, I can't move. Mm-hmm. And um, they did MRI and the doctor came out and he's like, he just looked at me, he said, how did you do it? And I'm like, I, I just spun, he's like, no, no, how did you play with play three her- yeah. herniated discs? I'm like, what's a herniated disc? <laughs> What's a herniated disc? Yeah. I don't know uh, what a herniated disc is. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He's like, well, this is your wall, spine wall. You have this. It doesn't actually slip. It doesn't. Mm-hmm. Hindi, the like Hindi shan like slip. Mm-hmm. But what it did was, it was, it was, it created. Um, when I fell, I said, "Nahulu ka ose PBL." Okay. Boom! I landed on PBL on your back on my back. Yeah. Against Harbor Center. Mm-hmm. That was, that was Gabe Norwood's team. That was Gabe Norwood's team. No, no, Gabe was playing oh, happy. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, sorry. He's playing happy. Yeah, yeah. Um, Sol Mercado, Jason Castro. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, Jason Castro, we're in the same class. Jason Castro. The greatest ever. Okay. All these guys are going Hall of Fames of PBA. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. So when you name it, like Sol Mercado, all these guys, right? It was a tough class. Yeah. Um, and I was playing Sol Mercado, Jason Castro, L.A. Tenorio, Joseph Yo. And having the room war that you're you have a bad knee doesn't yeah. help you it doesn't help it doesn't help it doesn't <laughs> help when a, when a company's ready to pick you they're not gonna yeah you know doesn't help so yeah and so you got the explanation finally yeah explanation why i got back spasm mm-hmm. like to start now and uh you know and, and, and what was happened it. was there surgery for it Did no you no surgery? no rest they said rest mm-hmm. um they said it'll slowly go back and I turned to the doctor and I'm like, okay, I'm good for two weeks, right? He's like, no, <laughs> you have three herniated discs. He's like, I don't think you understand the seriousness of that. I didn't understand because mm-hmm. I, I never, no, never, you didn't even know. There were herniated discs, right? Yeah. I didn't understand. So when I finally like got herniated discs, I hit depression, man, you name it, man. I, you know, like I got, got big, I yeah. got chubby and, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, that was, really the road of did, recovery mm-hmm. did alaska keep you on there yeah yeah because i was in contract i was yeah, in contract you, you, okay. i was in contract mm-hmm. so i was there and you know i did the rehab and stuff like that but it's different in the pba it, it, by pba i say pba is like when you're injured and you're not like the star star player yeah yeah it's almost like shit yeah i, I get it's you the business man it is it is the business right like mm-hmm. to think to think you trainers back then all right again i'm not talking bad about them yeah you know science is involved for me one of my one of part rehabs and when i slowly started coming back the one of the trainers from alaska gave me overhead squats i'm like what 
back then I didn't know, right? Because it was champagne. Yeah. Like, yeah. So I would think that they would know because it's yeah, they're, they're the PT, they're the right. trainers. They... So they gave me overhead squats. Now I'm a trainer now, I'm mm-hmm. a strength and conditioning mm-hmm. coach now. Yeah. And I look back, I'm like, oof, man, I did it all wrong. <laughs> yeah. You know, so. But you were able to come back though. I was you able to come back. for San Miguel. San Miguel. But it wasn't the ah, same. Yeah. It wasn't the same, man. Like, I I lost I lost so much step. Bagal mm-hmm. mm-hmm. My right leg wasn't you know your nerve. It just I hit the big, pain was still there. My bigot like yeah. my right leg it was so heavy. Mm-hmm. Um, so my game completely changed. You know, your game because I'm a It was like ah uh, like yeah. you know I, I tell the kids like I moved like Kyrie when I was like when I was younger, and then mm-hmm. I got to San Miguel. It was like. I just became a slow guy and my confidence was so low. There's a storyline about you mm. that says Kelvin De La Peña is one of the biggest what ifs yeah. uh, in the Philippine basketball <laughs> yeah. history. Yeah. Right? yeah I mean, just, my, when, when I played in San Miguel, my, my confidence was just. Siempre, I was out for over. I was out for almost two years, man. Almost two years. I was two out. years, that's a long break. That's a long break, man. I was out for two years hit depression i was suicidal right and then finally like work my way up to mm. walk again yeah because yeah, i was with uh, i was in a crutch mm-hmm. i was in a crutch i was in a cane and i was probably like 40 60 pounds heavier mm-hmm. and then finally work my way back and i told myself i just want to walk yeah and then when i started finally playing I, well, I, it, well, it's just different. It was just different. Yeah. It's just different, yeah. you know. Like, of course, and coming back from injury, it's, it's part the psychology right. part of side of it. Yeah, side yeah, of it. Yeah, you know, it gets to you too. So, um, yeah, it was, it was just tough. It was just tough. So you played for San Miguel, I think, for two years. Two years. And then you also played for Alab, right? No, uh, San Miguel. San Miguel. Oh yeah, San Miguel in uh, San Miguel. Ah uh, no, San Miguel. Uh, San Miguel beer. San Miguel beer. Beerman. Yeah. With, did you play with Junmar? Yeah, yeah. June yeah. Mar, I played with June mm-hmm. Mar. Um, ABL, right? That ABL. was the ABL. Yeah, I played with RJ. June Mar was still that was still a baby back then. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, but now you know he's, he's like the, a six-time, five-time MVP. I oh, think. he's he's gonna go down as the best player in, mm-hmm. in history of yeah. NBA. But back then, I remember like you know he was so young and he was so innocent. Mm-hmm. But then we all knew he was gonna be special. Yeah. Ray Parks, uh, Ray Parks would show up to our practice because his dad was my coach. Yeah. And uh, we were like, man, this kid's special, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, Chris Banchero was my yeah. teammate. Mm-hmm. Um, now plays for Phoenix. I remember. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, he plays for Phoenix, or no, and Lex Phoenix, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, so I met some. You know, it's it's really cool, like seeing these guys when they were young, mm-hmm. and I was one of the vets, right? Like it's really cool seeing them. They're still playing, and yeah. they're doing and they're really doing well. really great, really well, man. So yeah. June Mars in the semis now playing yeah. against our guy Glenn Yang. Yeah, against <laughs> Glenn. So yeah, yeah. It's been good. so let's sum up your playing career in in Asia. Yeah, because ABL is like a neat Southeast Asian league. Yeah. Right? One of the biggest biggest what what ifs in <laughs> the PBA in Asia. When did you decide to say, I'm gonna retire, or did you even retire officially? Um, no, I didn't. I didn't really. I didn't really. Um, when I when I finished San Miguel, it just you know, it just really left a bad taste, mm-hmm. and uh, I didn't really have a good experience. And mind you, I was I was so young, immature. Yeah. I wasn't professional. In the whole, I was such a I was I was not professional at mm. all. You know, I was uh, I was a head case. You still uh, had that mindset that I'm the best. Yeah, I still have that mindset, but I but my body couldn't do it mm-hmm. anymore, right? So I was a head case. I was uh, I was not professional. Mm-hmm. And, and I guess in a way, you know, I guess in a way, it's it's I went through that so that I can teach kids now. Yes. Right, so um, I retired. I was done. I, I wouldn't say officially retired. I just left. Yeah. I didn't tell anybody. You just went back to Canada. I just packed all my bags. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I packed all my bags. Didn't tell my agent. Didn't tell my teammates. Didn't tell San Miguel. And didn't tell any teams. Mm-hmm. And when I got back to the when I got back to Canada, mm-hmm. um, I played ABA Calgary Crush. Was that a professional team here? Here, yeah. Back then, mm-hmm. uh, it was ABA. How was that? It was good, man. It was good. We were we were actually really doing really well. We mm. traveled to Phoenix. We went to 
a couple places. We were, did really, really well. We were undefeated one season, but the league wasn't wasn't you know supportive. Was your back still hurting at that time? It was all. I was actually better now because that's when I became a strength and conditioning coach. Oh, I see. So I started taking care of my body, mm -hmm. and then I think word word got out that I was back playing in Canada. Yeah. So when I was playing ABA, ABA would post me and mm. then the social media mm. would post me. And then that's when I started getting calls from my agents. That's when I started getting calls from Air 21. Mm -hmm. uh, Don Dulai was with Rainer Shine. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Don, Don was like, hey man, we need a guard. We're looking for a guard. Mm -hmm. And I was like, nah, yeah. you think, I think I'm done. You, you're done. I think I don't like the traffic. <laughs> 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 I think I'm done PBA. And, I, I did it. Yeah. I did the Philippines thing, you know. I, I, you were successful. Yeah, I think I'm done, man. Yeah. I think I'm done. I've 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 tasted the PBA life, and mm -hmm. it wasn't it wasn't it was great. Yeah. Um, but I think I I miss so much of my family. I mm -hmm. think I'll stay here in Canada. So that's what I did. So you just you know went back here and decided to stay here for good. Fast forward yeah. to now. Let's talk yeah, about yeah. now. Uh, earlier I mentioned Rice Basketball mm -hmm. uh, Club which is, you're one of the founders mm -hmm. uh, of that. Tell us about Rise and what it does for the community here in, in Calgary. Um, so we started, yeah, we started, I think, you know, early as early as 2015, 2016, mm -hmm. around that time. I just started training, it was like three or four kids, mm -hmm. skills, and then it grew to this, this thing, right? I didn't wanna originally start a club, because mm -hmm. it was, at that time, I didn't know what to do. I, yeah. I just wanted to be a skills yeah. uh, trainer mm -hmm. and a strength and conditioning coach. Yeah, yeah. So starting a club was like, oh man, that's too daunting after mm -hmm. my career. Yeah. And then still Ali, basketball. It's still yeah. basketball, right? Yeah. So Ali, um, she also didn't want to start it because she saw she was getting a full time job uh, sports mm -hmm. check. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then one day we just said, you know what? The, maybe we can maybe we can do something about this yeah and so she was she kind of pushed me mm -hmm. she's like all right let's just change the game here so the two of you were the the two of us were co -founders. the co-founders yeah. yeah and yeah. of course like a lot of people here know you mm -hmm. and you're one of the legends in philippine basketball mm -hmm. and they kind of expect that you know yeah you it would, would be natural yeah kids here and but i didn't want to man you didn't want to yeah i didn't yeah. want to i just wanted to train maybe three or four kids yeah yeah and uh do it on the side do it on the side mm -hmm. right and i coached bishop mcnally because i wanted to mm -hmm. stay, still yeah. be involved the loyal guy in him showing yeah. up again because yeah. you know that's I wanted, where you i wanted that's to where you uh, played high school exactly i wanted to win some championships in my bishop mcnally so um now you know it's it's doing it's doing well man it's doing well it's we've been mm -hmm. very blessed mm -hmm. how um, many kids do you have now Ooh. can you even count oh my gosh um Oh man, I really don't know. To yeah. be honest with you, the last time I checked was the last time I would say we have forty-four teams. So we just, you know, we're doing teams. Now? Yeah, forty-four teams, and that's that's just like in-house and um, and then you know, like traveling mm -hmm. teams. Yeah. So, but it, you know what? It, it's it, I don't I don't I don't look at it as as that. It's just mm -hmm. I don't look at it as you know. Oh yeah, we're growing. It's yeah. Just like let's just keep it going. Like let's keep the basketball. Yeah training going you know and recently there was an announcement made that mm -hmm. you know rice will be yeah expanding in asia it's yeah. not called rice asia yeah tell us something about it coach yeah so the goal is so this this plan this plan has been you know in the uh, under works for really quite a, quite a while now mm -hmm. ali uh, my, my my late partner rest in peace yeah so uh, we've been planning this for during covid mm-hmm and uh, one of my good friends, Don Dulai, mm -hmm. who you mentioned was the you know, yeah. point guard of the Rainer Shine. Rainer Shine. Yeah. Um, you know, we were just talking a little bit back then, just play, just playing around with the idea. Mm -hmm. And then finally, you know, now that the like, open up name, you know, in Philippines, Philippines yeah. with the COVID and stuff. So we finally, you know, after a couple of couple nine months of planning and and talking and me going to the Philippines and sitting down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With uh, Don and sitting down with Jeff, mm -hmm. you know we, we Carriasso? We, Jeff Carriasso, okay. yeah. So we want to look at um, partnering up with also with Titan, Titan, yeah, 
one of the biggest names uh, in yeah. the Philippines. Yeah, yeah. so, so we want to do we want to do some big things in Asia. We want to just we would just want to open up the doors mm. for the Filipino kids here, mm. not just in Calgary. Siyempre, marami yeah. naman mga Pilipino. Yeah. So we want to open up the ki- the doors for, you know, for kids, you know, from Winnipeg, yeah. from Red Deer, mm-hmm. from Calgary, Edmonton, you, you name it, man. Yeah. All the Filipino kids here, we want to open up, you know, doors. And any kids, you know, kasi alam mo naman, UAAP, they're look for, they're look for the imports. The imports, yeah. Right, and then the imports and the PBA and so on and so mm-hmm. on. And then now the beautiful thing is B-League is there. Yeah, B-League. The Korean League. KBL. Right, right. Yeah. So all these leagues now are starting. So it's a perfect timing mm-hmm. to get going with Rise Asia. Mm-hmm. And uh, what we want to do is we want to expand it, not just in the Philippines, but hopefully, hopefully all of Asia. All of Asia. Yeah. Hopefully, not across the Philippines. Yes. Yeah. Well, Coach, before we end this interview, uh, I just want you to, you know, I mean, the pe- people have heard your story now. Yeah. You've played basketball here. You've played basketball in the Philippines. You were successful during your stint in the Philippines. Mm-hmm. And then now you're here teaching kid, kids mm-hmm. you know, how to play basketball, you're training them. We've seen some of the kids who grew up playing here go to the Philippines. Yeah. You know, some of them were able to stay there. Some of, some of them had to go back or have to go back yeah. here. You know, what's your advice to the kids who want to be professional players, maybe in the Philippines or here uh, in North America? Yeah. You know, what will it take for them to be you know successful I think you know what you have to like <laughs> if if you say I think you know I always tell the kids in my program if you say like basketball if you really love the game mm-hmm. if you really love the game then you have to study it mm-hmm. you have to you have to be like submerge mm-hmm. you know meaning it's like you know a lot of kids now they think they're they think that playing basketball two, three times a week, two hours or an hour and a half is mm-hmm. enough. Mm-hmm. It's not enough. It's not enough. You, 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 when you go overseas, you're competing with kids all around the world, from yeah. all around the world, right? So we look at the kids here, you mga bata dito, we look at the kids here and they compete against the kids in the Northeast, Northwest, yeah. Southeast, mm-hmm. Southwest, right? And they go, I'm the best in the city, yeah. right? But that's not enough. No. It's just not enough. Not it's not enough, right? So you might be best in your community, yeah. but when you're trying to go overseas, like you have to really put in extra work. So what I mean by that is, you know, you have to watch the games and you mm-hmm. really have to ask the right questions. Mm-hmm. The mindset, you have to, you know, uh, it's funny to say, you have to read books, you have to know mm-hmm. the history. You have to be involved in the whole community of like, that level of basketball you have to you have to train you have to you have to work out you have to you know wake up in the morning you have to practice good habits you know like you have to be be prepared for that because i think i think for me the reason why i lasted for almost 10 years there for i don't know 10 years i think the reason why i lasted so long is because when i was younger like I've been lucky enough to obviously have my dad but i was you know your mindset Mm -hmm. go yeah it's different right so I think the kids here, you know, especially in today's society, mm-hmm. I think they need to be tougher. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. the kids need to be tougher. Yeah. Um, iba yung iba yung yung competition sa sa Asia. Yeah. And and everywhere else in Europe is tough. In the States is tough. In Asia is tough. Now that you know mga KBL, yeah. you know B League yeah. and all those things, you know, if the kids from here want to make it. Mm-hmm. They have to be submerged in it, man. Like they have to be working out. They have to be watching the games. Mm-hmm. They have to be recording their games, and they have yeah. to be watching their games. You have to be asking the right questions. Go to skills training, right? And and no distractions. Yeah. No distractions. Meaning, you know, when when there's when their friends are saying, "Yeah, you're the best player," don't believe the hype. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Don't it's all hype. It's, it's all, all hype. It's all it's all hype. It's yeah. all hype. And at the end of the day, and they try to go and they try to go and play in the Philippines, yung yung title mo dito sa Canada, that shit don't matter. No, not at all. <laughs> that, sh- that does not matter. Mm-hmm. That doesn't matter. So the main thing there is like, you have to from day one to the very last, you know, when you finally make it, mm-hmm. you have to stay the course. You have to stay hungry. You can't believe your own hype. Yeah, live and breathe basketball. That's it, man. Yeah, that's that's the that's the only thing. You can't believe your hype. You can't mm-hmm. believe your hype. 
especially just when you're just you know you're playing against community basketball yeah, yeah. I'm gonna take it from Kelvin De La Peña late like when we started this interview or this this chat coach you you said you were misunderstood during your I time was misunderstood all you did was play basketball that's all I did yeah well, I, I remember joke people joking around with me and like oh you're gonna play in the NBA and people would laugh but mm-hmm. in my head I was like no I'm going to make an NBA mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> right but that's 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 the mindset that's that you the have. mindset that's just that's where you have to go right that's where mm-hmm. you have to go and I think a lot of kids you know it's they start like that yeah they start like that and then somewhere along the way the hype they they, they get distracted mm-hmm. right they yeah. get distracted and then, so when they get distracted they don't work as hard yeah because they mm-hmm. believe their hype. They yeah. start believing. This is me now. I'm, yeah, yeah. Tada, I've already made it. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. You've made like, it in the you, Northeast. You, you won the championship <laughs> game of the Northeast <laughs> basketball yeah. league. Yeah. No, nothing against. Nothing against. Nothing that. against the leagues here. They're nothing all competitive. Against They're all good. But nothing against it. But when you're trying to play somewhere else, mm-hmm. yeah, in a higher competition, mm-hmm. you have to think. You have to elevate your mind. Mm-hmm. You can't think you've already made it here. Yeah. Because you're playing against. You know, like. You guys, you're playing against guys that have nine to five. Yeah. That work Monday to Friday, nine to five. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? So you have to think your training has to be the way they train overseas. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, well, thank you very much. Coach. No, thank you, you know? man. Thank you. Thank you. That's yeah. a breath of fresh air. Oh, well, thanks. <laughs> like yeah. people this day, sorry, players this day, it's, for them, it's, okay, did I make the highlight? Mm-hmm. the highlight reel it's exactly. uh, didn't make the guy fall down yeah. did, did the crowd cheer when I did that yeah. move and that's it for them yeah they're, right. they're worried they're worried and they're more concerned about the wrong things yes yeah, yeah. and you know thank you for you know reminding yeah. the kids you know that it's not about that no, it's about no, 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 no. you know think globally yeah I think you know there's a kid Probably in Tondo, Manila. Yeah. Playing outside now. Yeah. Like at one in the afternoon. With no shoes. With no shoes. Just training, right? Just, like, yeah, you know. just, yeah. Just it. Just play. Yeah. But then we get kids. We get kids from here. Again, I'm nothing. I'm not, not talking bad. Mm. We get the kids here that get can go to the mall, mm-hmm. get the latest LeBron shoes mm-hmm. for 260 bucks, mm-hmm. but go to the gym, play for an hour, and they think that's it. They won against... Like a three on three game, right? I'm right. This is uh, right. But then when when you take a kid from overseas that has no meal, mm. that has no breakfast, no lunch, no dinner, mm. fighting for his life. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you take that kid fighting for his life, and and he, all he his ticket is to make to the PBA, that's B League mm. or KBL. I guarantee you, by the end of the day, the kid that wearing shoes. He's gonna get his yeah. ass kicked. Yeah, mm-hmm. I <laughs> so, totally agree yeah. with that, coach. Yeah. yeah. Well, I guess that's thank you, man. our time for thank you. this interview, thank you. coach. I wish we could. Oh, I, I, know. I know we can talk about other <laughs> stuff as well, but it's getting late here. Yeah, and, I, know. Uh, I appreciate and, it, man. You know, thank you. Thanks very for much, having coach. me. Thanks for having me. Uh, well, I know one day. I know one day you're gonna have your own studio. <laughs> I we had to cut this interview because yeah. you know we had people in the house oh, today. Yeah. I mean, I mean, mindset—it's part. It's all part of the process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Yeah, it's yeah. good. I'm proud of you, man. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, Kelvin De La Pena. What an inspiration! <laughs> you, know, you know, hopefully, kids or players or even adults who are watching who will be watching this, you know, video or this interview can get a thing or two from you hope so uh you know he's not bragging that you know i did this so you should do this you should do it as well it's just hey uh that was my experience that was that was my that was his experience and yeah. the way i look at it he was successful no yeah. well thank you yeah thank yeah you. and he is continuing his legacy here in calgary alberta canada uh you know, please support Rice and Rice Asia. Yeah. All the programs that they're offering. I mean, if you want to learn, learn from the best. Hmm. And I believe Coach Kelvin De La Pena is one of the best uh, trainers, coaches here, oh, mentors thanks, here in, in in Calgary. Thank you, Coach. Any parting words? Uh, yeah, you know, with with uh, with the Filipino community, and, and you know, just uh, anybody watching. 
Uh, first of all, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. Um, thank you for all the years of supporting uh, my younger years. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that's what I did. And that's, uh, that's the past. But moving on is, I think, you know, I just want to thank you guys for supporting me over the years mm -hmm. and uh, your continued support. So, marami marami salama. There you go. Kelvin De La Peña. Yeah. Thanks, man. Founder of Rice, and now they're expanding uh, in Asia. So, please check out their programs. Thanks, guys. And there you go. Thank you for watching, everyone. My name is Zeke of YYC Athletes. Thank you for all your support. Uh, really appreciate, uh, you know, all the kind words that you've been giving uh, me. Uh, I mean, this is all for the community as well. So, let's keep growing. Let's keep supporting each other. Uh, spread love. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to everyone.